Hi, Bill Nye, the science guy. Um, uh, hi, Kelsey. It's hi, I'm so excited to talk to you. I feel like I've known you my whole life. I've, you probably get that a lot. Yeah, that's, well, that's great. <laughs> it's a lot better than I, who are you? I hate you. That's <laughs> that's true. I love your bow tie. Oh, this? Yeah. <laughs> I throw it on when I don't care how I look. <laughs> Just threw it on. Um, but okay, so let's talk about the eclipse. I'm very excited for the eclipse. I can tell that you are too. We've been getting a lot of questions from our readers about what's going to happen if it's cloudy or a rainy on eclipse day. Can you talk about that? There'll still be an eclipse. <laughs> the world will get dark. Cool? The birds will do their nighttime things. The crickets will do their nighttime things. There'll be a breeze generally because the ground gets cool very quickly. And uh, I saw a, a cloudy eclipse when I was in South Africa, many 2002. It's still spectacular. And in general, even when it's cloudy, when you look straight in the sun's direction, you will see the sun. And I say, look at the sun. You got to have your eclipse glasses because the human nature part of it is we just want to stare, <laughs> just want to stare at the sky. And so you can hurt your eyes if you don't have uh, proper protection. And I remind you that these paper glasses, these cardboard glasses with the plastic lenses are more than enough. They are enough to be safe. They really do work. It's the real deal. So if it's cloudy, we'll still, it'll still be. It's cool. still going to get dark. They, they will still have an eclipse, even if it's cloudy. Yes. Okay, good. That's and if it's raining. Are gonna do. Huh? <laughs> and if it's raining, there was a chance of rain at the beginning of the week. Yeah. So if it's raining, it will still get dark. <laughs> That's just a rule. <laughs> uh, it's a thing. They, they don't, they don't postpone the eclipse on account right. of weather. Right. The sun doesn't have a meeting with the moon. No. Uh, well, and so this is the extraordinary thing about living on Earth is our moon subtends. What a fabulous word. Subtends the same angle of sky as the sun. Almost exactly. And this okay. gives us these spectacular effects here on Earth's surface. You know, back in October, then the last Texas nexus there where the partial eclipse went over mm -hmm. from southeast to northwest. Uh, the moon is a little farther from Earth, about 40,000 kilometers farther from Earth. And so you could see a ring of sunlight around the moon. But not this time, people. <laughs> it's going dark. <laughs> well, and so why did you want to be in Texas for the eclipse? Well, because of the weather. Now, there's some... There are certain weather models showing it'll be cloudy. There are other ones showing it won't be cloudy. We'll see, pun intended, or literally. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but either way, we'll be there. We're going to be in Fredericksburg, which is right in the middle of the path. You know, the closer you are to the center, the longer it's dark. Mm -hmm. and this is because, no joke, everybody, the curvature of the Earth. I A few months ago, I met actual people in the actual United States uh, here on Earth who actually think that the Earth might actually be flat. No. <laughs> and you can, the tendency, of course, is to make fun of somebody like that. But it just shows you that our education system is not doing what it ought to be doing. Mm -hmm. it, uh, the Earth's not flat, everybody. It's a, it's a sphere. The moon's round. The sun's round. So is Earth, everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so, uh, anyway, the, uh, this really is an extraordinary thing that astronomers can predict uh, a, a total solar eclipse within hundreds of a second mm -hmm. because we understand the motions of the planets and uh, celestial bodies so well. What adds a little variability, by the way, are comets and uh, asteroids give a little extra gravity here and there. It can throw things off by a few thousandths of a second. It's amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, and so you've experienced a total solar eclipse before. Can you talk about that experience? Well, it's fantastic. Last time, last one I saw was 2017 mm -hmm. in uh, Nebraska, uh, National Park there. And it was fantastic. It went completely dark. You saw stars, ch birds, crickets, slight breeze. Then I saw something that time I had never seen before, way, way, way off in the distance. Mm-hmm. 
you could see sunlight. In other words, you could see the edge of the the edge of the shadow. Oh my god! <laughs> That's uh, so but cool. it's spectacular. So you know, this time we'll be able to see Jupiter and Mars if you know where to look. Oh my god! The, where to look? Where should we look? In the sky. <laughs> So I'm joking for hilarity, but check out planetary.org, your homepage. I know you're all members. All of your viewers and listeners are members of the Planetary Society. Of course you are. Started by Carl Sagan, world's largest independent space interest organization advancing space science and exploration so that citizens of Earth will know the cosmos and our place within it. Of course, you're all members. Yes, of course. I could have repeated that to you. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, we have uh, we have some sky charts, some star charts there. But <laughs> we hope our dream is that everybody's so into it, the shared experience that we all point out, point these things out to each other. Mm-hmm. So uh, the big thing is that it turns to night. It just in the middle of the day, it becomes night for four minutes. It's, it's amazing. Oh it's really amazing. And of course, there's an hour and a half. You know the thing. The moon starts going in front of the sun for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And that's, frankly, the, the eye protection danger is you humans just want to watch this thing, just want to stare at it. And if you don't have proper eye protection during that hour and a half, you can really mess up your eyes. So where are these things, everybody? Yeah. And when you look at Mars and Jupiter, do you need to have the glasses on? You got to take them off. You won't see them. They're okay. way too okay. dim. Yeah, yeah. No, once it's totality, you'll see everybody. You'll want to take your glasses off. You, you'll. It's quite intuitive. Yeah. Everybody, look. You've you've looked at the sun. <laughs> you know, uh, the, my example is a fly ball. When you're playing the outfield in softball, or whatever, and somebody so you you accidentally look at the sun for a moment. You just can't stare at it for an hour and a half. Right. That, that'll mess you up. Right. Well, and so I feel like people are really kind of stressed about Eclipse Day because, you know, all the count, like there's so many counties in Central Texas that have done disaster declarations just because so many people are expected to be visiting the area. Oh, yeah. So be careful on the highways, everybody. Pay attention. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I was going to say, do you have any tips like for the actual day? Like what is your, like, are you going to, what time are you going to wake up on Eclipse Day? What are you going to do on the actual day? Well, so on Eclipse Day, I will be working the media, mm-hmm. people like you. So I think <laughs> I'll get started around 7 yeah. in the morning, Eastern yeah. time, maybe 6, 6 a.m. Central, maybe. Yeah. And I'll be there talking about, getting excited about it, doing things. We're going to have, at the Planetary Society event, we'll have Mark Rober and Science Bob. Mm-hmm. You know, if you know those guys. And we'll have uh, people from Innova Disc Golf Discs. Uh, talking about circles and spinning things and all these wonderful things. We'll have uh, astronomers. We'll have star parties Sunday night, Monday night. We'll show episodes of the original Cosmos, our founder, Carl Sagan. And uh, it'll be big fun. Yeah. Okay. Well, awesome. I feel like that. Is there anything else we need to know about the eclipse? Well, just be in the moment, everybody. Right now, everybody wants to take selfies. Everybody wants to have their phone camera out. That's all people talk about. Instagram is all about taking pictures of what you had for breakfast. And I got all that. (laughs) But be in the moment for these four minutes. Just settle in and uh, enjoy it. It's spectacular. And did I say wear eye protection? I did bring that up, I think. I'm pretty sure. (laughs) Okay, well, awesome. Thank you so much for taking the Thank time. you. Yeah. Um, are you going to get barbecue while you're here? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. I'm just, making, I'm I'm just sure. making sure. You know, I've spent a lot of time in Texas. I don't yeah. know if you... I, in the old ancient days, as a young engineer, I worked for a company in Seattle that made, at that time, the premier oil slick skimming boat. Oh, Okay. So I spent time in Corpus Christi, but then we had this derivative product for separating what would seem trivial, oil from water and oil field, Permian Basin kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I spent a lot of time in Victoria. Oh, oh my gosh. In Odessa, I used to wash my coveralls in the greaser machines at the laundromat. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, um, I uh, worked in Snyder, Texas. Okay. Snyder, Texas is a little smaller than your computer screen. <laughs> and uh, 
<clears throat> but we can't, you guys, I pumped oil. We can't be pumping oil anymore. We got climate right. change stuff to do. Those were the days. Yeah. TV Almost TV. 50 years ago. <laughs> it was. Uh, yeah, I believe it. <clears throat> well, we'll see you soon, Kelsey. It's yeah. going to be fun. Yeah, this was awesome. Thank you so much. Carry on. Yeah, you too.